All right, welcome in folks to our second ADU webinar where we explain more about ADUs. And I'm joined by our team member, Chris Raya. Chris, thanks for joining me on this. Sure thing. So uh, we've already done one presentation, which is the ADUs 101, which kind of goes over everything from start to finish. So on this one, we've got a little bit different of an agenda. And we want to start with first explaining who we are and what we do. This is our company. This is our, our key personnel, which includes myself and Chris, and then two others that aren't on this webinar right now, which is TJ in the middle, and then Blake at the bottom stair there. And uh, these guys are veterans in the construction industry, um, and they know the ins and outs about how to do it, try to deliver the best customer service, make sure our clients are real happy. We don't drop the ball uh, on anything and, and make sure that people are are really satisfied with our, our work and refer us for additional business. What do you think, Chris? What, what else would you say there? Yeah, exactly. Just having a, a team that's experienced and knows what they're doing. Um, also not, you know, overloaded. You know, we all, we all have uh, critical roles that we play and specialize in, and it helps make sure your project runs smoothly. You know, it's not going to be um, the situation where one guy is trying to estimate properly while making sure you're house is being framed up in a straight manner. It's uh, all of us working together to make sure it all goes smoothly. Yeah, absolutely. And so we, we really work hard to make sure that clients are really happy with their experience and we deliver on our estimates based on what we propose at the beginning, our timelines and the quality of work that we do. So business has been growing because of that. And we really uh, take a lot of pride in making sure we do that. Additionally, we, we offer a lot of really good customer service. And part of that is because of the software and the systems that we use, one of them being co-construct. Chris, can you kind of explain people what co-construct is and how it works? Yeah, co-construct, it's an online portal. So you can see what we see through the project. Main, main items are the scheduling. So uh, your project schedule will be created at the very beginning with best estimates on timelines. With projects, especially in construction, there's um, things always change. So whether uh, early finishes. So as we work through the project and update the original baseline with actuals, you'll see how it affects the, the entire timeline, how it affects your completion date. And then you can always have access to the, all the financials. So if you want to see what all you paid, what to do, what's coming up um, as far as all the payments and as well as any change orders that you've decided to change the project with and selection items. So as you're going through picking out material that we're helping you with, you wanna make sure that, you know, you're not picking out the highest end of everything and, and blowing the budget. You, you always wanna know where you're at and that's what uh, Coke and Shuck can help you do. Yep, and it helps us with their proposals as well. And so when you're picking your selections, you have allowances in there for your faucets, for your ceiling fans. And so it's nice because there's no confusion about, oh, I thought you said this or that. It's right here in black and white on the system. Here's the link you sent me of the exact ceiling fan you wanted. And that's the one we ordered. And, you know, everyone agrees to it. So there's no confusion. It's really nice. Clients love it. They, you know, they really like how transparent it is. There's no confusion of what's happening, what stage we're at in construction, how much they've paid, which things they've picked. So that's co-construct. It's not, it's not our proprietary software. It's a popular software that a lot of construction companies use to keep in good contact and uh, workflow for their projects. Uh, additionally, our website at calhomeco.com has a handful of our ADUs that we finished on there in addition to our other construction projects and some of the other services we offer within our company. Um, so we're always posting and updating pictures on there so you can get some design ideas and just get some examples of some of the projects that we've done. All right, let's get right into it. So what's on our agenda today? So basically, we're just going to talk about time and money related to ADUs. How long is it going to take to build this thing? And how much is it going to cost? So how long is it going to take? We're going to talk about the time to design, time to permit, and then time to build, and then the cost. Cost to design, cost to permit, and then the cost to build. And then I'd, I'd additionally uh, refer you to our prior webinar, which is on that link right there. And you can also find it from our YouTube channel, which goes into more of the mechanics of how much it costs, some of the tax benefits, what your return on investment can be, some other ideas, and uh, some other information that won't be covered on this webinar since this is the 102. 
All right, let's dive right into it. It's project number one, and this is up in Vista. This is a garage conversion. And this is just a picture that you can see right there with the, our dump trailer in the front as we're getting started with work on turning this two car garage into a nice 490 square foot ADU. So in this case, the plans and designs, Chris, you wanna kind of jump in here? Sure thing. So plans and designs, and we call this, you know, in a, in a full pro, a full phase pre-construction. So pre-construction is us taking you from ideas to approved plans, um, approved building permits. It does not include the permit fee itself, important to note, uh, but it does include all the design and drafting, any engineering, so structural engineers required for a garage conversion, it's pretty minimal, but if you wanna put a door in a new location or a window in a new location, we need to get a structural engineer involved just to make sure we pull out the right, the right beams and um, studs so the house doesn't fall over. And um, basically we get your full construction documents, um, including Title 24. Uh, another key value that we do add in this um, pre-construction phase as a general contractor is construction consulting and uh, construction cost estimates along the way. So, you know, what we, what we see a lot of the times is people uh, have come to us, they already have everything planned out, they've submitted for permits, and they say, hey, yeah, I want to remodel my budget to 100000 and they're getting bids, and, you know, no one was really paying attention to the cost along the way, and all of a sudden, they're getting bids coming back at 200000 It's a real example. We've seen it easily double what the original budget was. So um, what we do along the way is, on, based on the initial floor plan, say, hey, it's looking pretty cost effective within budget, we'd say hey, it's safe to proceed with getting all the full construction docs ready and submitting for permits. Um, but anyway, we help you make those informed decisions along the way. And that 7,500 would be inclusive of all those items. So uh, this particular ADU uh, garage conversion from the time the clients say, hey, let's go ahead and get this start started on the design. We got it submitted to the city of Avista in three weeks. And um, there was a cost for getting you there. Yeah, and Chris, just explain real quick what Title 24 means. Sure, yeah, Title 24, that'd be the California Energy Efficiency Requirements. So they're gonna make sure that the um, indoor and outdoor air quality um, it's, has a minimal effect based on the construction methods and windows and HVAC systems. Great, let's move on. So on this one, permits took about two months, no challenges. Um, and I don't think we had the cost on it, but typically these kind of permits are roughly about 3000 bucks. Is that about right, Chris? Yeah, 3000 for a garage conversion is usually about, about right. Yep, and that just goes straight to the city for them to do all the plan checks and make sure that, you know, that we're building this thing to code. Yeah, and this one was submitted, let's see, mid-2020. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, they have, cities per law have uh, 60 days to um, approve these. So city of this, it's a 57 days for this one, almost. So yeah, depending on which area it's at and which planning department, there's different timelines on how long they are supposed to get the plans reviewed and back to us. And then there's the real life and, and whether they wanna blame things like other external factors and why they might be delayed. So this is kind of out of our hands, but we can kind of give rough estimates based on experience. Right. And then on construction, uh, this one specifically cost 115,000. And that come, came out to about $232 per square foot. And it only took about three months. So start to finish that, you know, there's, we don't waste any time. We don't pull people to go work on other projects. When we tell people it's three months, we get it done in three months. Kind of see the, the, the tile in the bathroom getting put in, in this picture here. Let's show some more pictures though. People like to see this. So this is what the finished product looked like, right? So it's just from a random two car garage to now you got a fenced and separate rentable living unit with exposed, um, trusses in the garage structure, a nice big open concept. You can see the laundry room in the bathroom itself, tiled up, uh, really good sized kitchen that anyone could live with, dishwasher, yeah. full stove, full fridge, um, and lots of cabinets for pots and pans and foods and stuff like that. So really well executed. The clients were super happy with it. They became some of our biggest fans and, um, and you know, we'll continue doing more projects with them. Anything else on this one, Chris? Yeah, just as a note, so this was, this garage was about 490 square feet, so a little bit bigger than a typical two-car garage, but still, you know, two-car garage. 
and then you know take advantage of what you can so they want we wanted vaulted ceilings but to redo all those roof trusses that are you know pre-manufactured and engineered specifically for this project would have been cost prohibitive so we went ahead and just put the drywall or insulation and drywall up above uh, mud and taped around painted and now it's got a cool look and it's unique and fun and um, it's going to have that wow factor to potential renters so yeah it still pretty, gives you that feeling of tall ceilings right yeah, you still get that big space uh, you got a washer dryer large master bedroom with with a, a pretty big bathroom for the size of the place and then they see the bottom right corner you'll have a um, six foot custom made barn door so that was not installed at the time of the photos it was being built but yeah that's this uh that's this project cool let's get to the next one project number two which is a detached almost 700 square foot adu right so you can see the space that was just mulch before in this person's backyard and now we were able to turn it into a nice revenue generating piece of property chris do you remember if this one was built for family or for for rental it's initially going to be for family okay and yeah for a yeah, for grandparents. So basically, it's a really a granny flat for a granny. Awesome. And, and uh, yeah, so they built it uh, right in this corner. Um, interesting note here, if you're on a corner lot, as this property was, we have basically a, a street and a street going around you. Setbacks are a little different. So it's something to keep in mind. You don't get it to take advantage of uh, four foot uh, side setbacks if you have a street there in, in most cases. So it's just a couple screenshots of the plans. In this case, these plans and there's different de designers that we use and depending on the complexity of the project and what kind of design you want, the pricing can vary a little bit from project to project. But in this case, it was ten, ten and a half thousand dollars for plans and and uh, get those through to the city. And it took about two months to tweak these with the homeowner and with the designer. Is that about right? Yeah, exactly. So a little bit longer here. Usually the timeline is one to two months. Um, and you know something with a garage, you, there's only so much creativity you can put into a pre-existing square. Um, detached, uh, this one had a little more, a uh, little more work, and it was for for families, so they're going to pay a little bit more attention versus I guess renters. And um, yeah, two months got it got it from idea to plan submitted to the city. Yeah, and, and one of the things that people sometimes forget is that when the plans are drawn up, you can't just use ready-made plans and say, let's just pop this thing here because the architect or designer has to come out to the property, measure the lot, measure the existing house and show the existing conditions in addition to the proposed proposed building, right? So that takes a fair amount of work and several hours of, of uh, work to, to get all those measurements done. So permits... In this case, it looks like this one costs about 6,000. You can kind of see some of our rough framing and plumbing behind the walls here and took about two months. Where was this one located, Chris? Oceanside. Okay, this one's an Oceanside. So um, pretty yeah, straightforward so there. That's kind of the higher end of what permits cost for an ADU. And that's significantly cheaper than before the bills passed because this same structure would have probably cost about seventeen dollars to $20,000 in permit fees, but they've waived a lot of different fees associated with new construction for ADUs in, in, in order to encourage the building. So on average, it's about $11,000 savings uh, per property for building an ADU because they save on diff fees and a few other things. Okay, move on, construction. So this one for almost 700 square feet came to $200,000, is that right? Yeah, yeah, $200,000. And that would be, as you see, 286 a square foot. And, and just keep in mind on, uh, if, you're, if you're just starting out and wondering what these things cost, most of our ADUs, um, let's say, you know, medium size and, you know, the smallest you can go is, I think, a couple hundred square feet largest generally 1200 square feet depending on the jurisdiction but most mid-size are falling between 250 and 300 a square foot for construction costs and then the timeline a uh, the general timeline for detached new ground up adus four to six months so this one's uh, still under uh, under construction and should be completed in the next uh, month or so a closer look yes yeah, so we can see we're almost done right mm-hmm Main and structures up. Stucco has since been uh, installed. Got it. So, yeah. Looks good. So this is something that, you know, it was just raw dirt and we had to pour the foundation, connect to utilities, connect to sewer, connect to gas, water, electricity, 
frame this thing up, put in all the yeah. windows, all the electrical and the plumbing, you know, a whole new how it's a it's a it's a house, you know, you, you're building a house just on the smaller scale. Small house and you still have all the amenities. So you can see a mini split system in the bottom right picture, mini split uh, heating and cooling, and then laundry, washer, dryer. So, you know, we're packing a lot into a small space and then it's just an efficient use of space and um, get a lot of bang for your buck as, as far as if you're renting it out or, um, or even for the renters who, who uh, lease it from you. Yep, awesome. Next project, cranking through these. So a detached property, La Mesa, thousand square feet. And here you can see our little excavator kind of leveling this property out because we had to do a little bit of grading in this case, right? And do a little grading, a little bit of um, earthwork and a retaining wall as well. So got to make the site ready for the structure. You can't just drop it on anything. So Chris, jump into here on the plans and stuff. Yeah, so the, the, the plans on this one, uh, this was a two-story, uh, 950 square feet ADU. Um, a bit more expensive to uh, to work through. Uh, it took on the, the higher end of the timeline and they're getting uh, two two bedrooms, you know, laundry, everything out of there. Uh, this one had, uh, we'll, we'll probably touch on that in construction as well, but uh, you do have a seven foot to daylight rule for concrete. If you your, your concrete footings down, you can't be within seven feet of, um, of daylight. So if you're on a hill like this one was, you need to, you need to fill that out with retaining walls or terracing or whatever the case is. Uh, but a few, a few challenging um, items here that needed to be addressed. So not your just a typical square flat lot, but still something that just needs to be worked through in the process. Did the, the plans fees include like a civil engineer or structural engineers and stuff too? It, the plans, yes, they, they would include the engineering. And, you know, when, when, you, when you start out and say, hey, I want to build a detached, you know, thousand square foot ADU, You'll say, hey, this is what they normally cost. If you start designing some complex architectural features that the engineers may end up, may charge more than that allowance amount that we provided, which is fine. It's something that we, we can uh, let you know about along the way, but you know, it's, everything's, it, this is a process and you know, construction is a lot of moving parts. So these initial prices is best estimates. And then what the actuals are, uh, are end up being pretty close to that. Awesome. Permits, looks like this case about $6,500 and it took two months. And this one was in La Mesa, right? So La Mesa has got their own planning department and they can be pretty efficient when they need to be. Yep. So looks like that cranked up. So you can see it's got second frame framed up, the scaffolding all around it. Let's get to construction. Go ahead, Chris, I'll let you jump into this one as, as well. Yeah, so on, on this one, we, we still had our, our pretty typical cost per square foot on the construction cost. So 285, um, you know, there is a factor of, you know, we're going up. So yeah, there is some beefier uh, framing requirements. Uh, but then on the other end, there is a little bit less concrete foundation being poured. So if you did 1,000 square foot wide uh, versus, you know, about 500 square foot on top, there are some like pluses and minuses to both. And it kind of equals out. On this one, we had talked about earlier the earthwork and uh, terracing and retaining walls. So there was about $40,000 worth of that earthwork that was needed to build it. And this one took about seven months. Yeah, and I think it took a little bit longer in this one because one of the key factors in construction is the weather. And so if it's raining while we're trying to pour a foundation, it puts a brakes on pouring the foundation because you can't pour foundations into wet, muddy dirt. So um, that that's always a factor. And that's why we usually estimate four to six months. In this case, it might've taken a little longer because of the earthwork and or weather conditions. Exactly. See what this looks like. All right, pictures came into focus. Hey, you can see that big staircase up to that retaining wall that goes to the house. And the finishes on the inside, they kind of went earth tones, which is you know a little bit dated, but still looks great in this property. Tiled up, nice cabinets, nice open space. Got the mini split again. Still full-size kitchen with the dishwasher, big farmhouse, apron, front sink, 30 inch range. Good living in here, huh? Absolutely. Right. Let's get to the last project that we're going to review here. ADU above a three-car garage. So here's the backyard in question. We can see the back of the house. And so we're going to be building here. That's a gate open to the alley. This is over in University Heights. 
right? So nice central San Diego location, premium rents. So plans in this case, a little bit more expensive. We used a premium architect on this one to get it done. Uh, it's a larger structure. It included the garages um, and the structure above it. So a lot of, lot of uh, planning and moving parts on this one. You can kind of see some pictures of the elevations and the, and the plans on there. Uh, some tricky things with some doors, the way they open and double open. You can see kind of that bathroom and bedroom in that top left corner, how we got uh, the common bath from the main kitchen area, even throwing in little features like solar tubes, which are super great ways to bring some natural lighting into the middle of a room. Permits in this case, about $6,000 and took about three months. City can get delayed sometimes. Um, typically the designers and architects we use know the code so well that we don't have a lot of cycle issues or revisions to make. And uh, I thought this picture was kind of cool because the, the solar tubes don't have the lens on the, on the ceilings yet. And they just kind of made this cool light ring pattern um, in the rough unfinished room just yet. See that, Chris? Yeah. Construction in this case took seven months. $293. And, uh, you know, what people forget is that garages are kind of cheap to make and living space is more expensive. So in this case, the price per square foot was significantly lower because it included almost a thousand square foot of garage, right? It was a yeah, huge exactly. oversized garage, three cars. Uh, two of the, two of the garages are going to be for the owners in the front house. And the one car garage is going to be for the renter of this back house, which is a 780 square foot, two bed, two bath. And yeah, back in 2019, right at the end of 2019, when we finished this one, um, they said they had like 35 applications within one day for their posted rate of 2,800. And they said they probably should have charged more, which I'm sure they would have got as well because the market, market is hot. And this kind of fits that parameter that I've, I've mentioned to you, Chris, before, uh, not in this, this presentation, which is kind of that 1% rule. Like if you build something and if you can get 1% of that build cost in terms of rent, that's a win, right? Now it's almost a 12 to 15 cap. Uh, and as an, you know, as an investor, it's a huge return because you can't buy property in San Diego that gives you a 12 cap. At best case, it's a three to 5% cap rate, capitalization rate. Uh, so if you're building something for $300,000 and you can get $3,000 a month, that's a huge return on investment. You can't buy property in Arizona that, that, that performs that well. Here's what the structure looks like. Nice three car garage. What are those little doors called? The Romeo and Juliet type doors, the balcony doors uh, type Juliet, things? Juliet, Juliet doors. Yeah, Juliet doors, right, yep. Yeah, you can uh, come out and sing in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, pick some bold colors there and some well tiled up bathrooms, pebble stone on the bottom and nice vaulted ceilings. So a nice two bedroom, two bath. Huge kitchen, especially for an AD with a lot of cabinets. So um, no wonder the renters are clamoring for this place because it's also in a great location in University Heights. So that's basically it. That was kind of our, our four projects that we can kind of share with you. Uh, this is our ADUs 101 presentation. If you want to go to that link or go to our page, you can find that as well. And uh, a great way to book with Chris is on his Calendly link under new dash projects. And uh, you can book some time with them, kind of go over what your thoughts are and what you think and, and, and start the process to get something built. Yeah, look forward to, to meeting with uh, some of you out there. And yeah, go to calendly.com uh, forward slash new dash projects or uh, calhomeco.com slash contact as well goes to the same place. So, yeah. Great. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate everyone for tuning in and listening. Hopefully this was useful to you. If you have other content that you want us to cover, let us know and we'll create it. Have a great day, folks. All right. Bye.